Happy Monday, y'all. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, has anything weird happened in the last 24 hours, Justin? Oh, my good God, Bri. Uh, yeah. A little bit. Weird things not related to the normal move, move, news moves. Normal moves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What are you gonna do, man? That's a uh, that's a that's a that's some crazy trash. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> that's totally gonna say that. Oh, can I tell you a fun little thing that's not worth being in the show? Sure. So yeah. uh, I was up last night. I am in this bad habit of falling asleep on my couch at two a.m., waking up at six a.m., and going to bed uh, for another couple of hours um, because I am my father, apparently. <laughs> and um, so I was trying to get to bed which was tough because I had just taken a three hour nap apparently. And so I was on TikTok. I was back on TikTok because the, the Cause that's, that's where you go at two in the morning. But, and bite the new bite, the vine 2.0 is out. And so I use that for a minute. I was like, well, this is like TikTok, but worse. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. So, so is it, is it from vine or it's just it's from the to creator vine? of vine? Oh, got it. And okay. it's, 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 it's basically TikTok, but only six second videos. Got you it. can't do the 15 second or the minute long. Um, but I was scrolling through and I see this one thing that comes up and it's this guy talking to the camera and it takes me a second before I realize he's trying to talk to the, the user, me saying like, Hey, the TikToks will be there in the morning. You should get some sleep. Oh, that's adorable. Or was it too I, creepy? I thought it was a little weird. <laughs> what do you all... mean? <laughs> I think it's, I think it is a good idea. I think it's a good idea, but at... <laughs> <laughs> at at the time that it was, and, and the fact that I was I was actually trying to get Wait, to sleep. No, no, no. Was that was that a video or was it like TikTok, the app telling you go to sleep? It was a video in the feed, like one yeah. of the normal videos, but it was from TikTok official, and it's it even had this little oh. banner that said "digital well being." Oh, I did not. Uh, okay, that's no, this different. Was, yeah, no, this the, I think was like a targeted like. You I, should, they, they'll be there in the morning. I thought it was a creator who was saying, oh, this will be a fun thing yeah. to tell everyone at one in the morning. Or, uh, that, that's like, hey, buddy, knock it off. We're, we're paying attention. We're watching your TikTok. And yeah. I, I would assume that especially since whenever you're dealing with a youth market like that, uh, uh, I, I probably, it probably makes sense that they want to be proactive on like the, 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 in this post world of like, Oh, more engagement, more clicks. We just want to keep you on the platform for as long as possible when you're dealing with the kids, capital T, capital K, uh, uh, that that you'd be like, no, look, before you yelled at us, we had safeguards. Like, we yelled at Bryce that one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, like, I do think it's a good idea. It was just... I, I was surprised by it because I was only on it for like 20 minutes or so. Uh, uh, I, I want to see the pendulum swing so far to the other side that we see Facebook uh, things saying like, hey, guys, seriously reconsider voting. Like, don't just go voting willy nilly. Like, only vote if you're very, very sure and you've well researched your candidate. And oh, you know geez. for sure you want to vote. <laughs> I should, uh, I, Facebook should just go. Hey, whoever you were going to vote for, switch. <laughs> like, now no one can blame us. Opposite day is November 4th, 2020. <laughs> Opposite day. Vote for whoever you weren't going to vote for. Like, fucking get these people off our back. Yeah. Is election day on the 4th? I do not know. Uh, it's, it's on a Tuesday, so it changes. Yeah. Uh, all, all I know is it's the week of Scoop Fest. <laughs> November well, that's 3rd. Right. That's right. It's Scoop Fest. <laughs> it's the 3rd. I was close. I was very close. I guess it was a 1 out of 7 chance. All right. <laughs> It's pretty easy to be close when when you got three days on either side. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, you guys want to do a show? We got a good ready, show ready. for you. Uh, one thing I got a lot of topics, so we can kind of go a little faster today. Let's go. Um, all right, here we go. Turn in three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I am your host, as always, every week, Bryce Castillo, joined, as always, with two of my best friends in the world, Brian Brushwood. And I remember when we started this podcast, the three of us, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, that's yep. right. And Justin Robert Young. 
I remember I was working in Bryce's warehouse and, uh, <laughs> you know, putting together all the magic effects that Bryce makes. And uh, That was, uh, that was know, before Bryce had his TV show, right? It was before my TV show. That was before, oh, yeah. Or even the pilots that, that we shot. Remember, Bryce? You know, that was uh, that mm -hmm. was a crazy, a crazy time. Yeah, uh, it, was, but, it, was, but, it was really busy because I was doing all the magic stuff and we were just starting the Weird Things podcast. And that was before your uh, author career that's really taken <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my career writing Steve. Steamy novellas. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, Andrew Main has uh, been taken in the night, in the depth of the night. So uh, we're we're yep. here to keep the weird things going, folks. We've talked on this show before about um, you. You guys remember there was a thing where they could take a scan of your eye, your your um, your retina. What's the, the retina and the white retina? parts, and they could detect sclera. The, yeah, the sclera. They could the suburbs. The <laughs> suburbs are the white parts. <laughs> Uh, touching that so they could take a look at the scan and they uh, our machine learning could be like hey you these are the these are some patterns of, of like uh I, i'm gonna get it wrong but like diabetes or it could detect like uh, oh yeah 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 that, yeah that, that you that there are tells like unmistakable medical tells to your eye and that's something where you know uh, uh it, it would border on because the scale they the speed of it would be so fast that is like an unnerving thing that we could just be like, uh, uh, oops, you know it. And also that as we might rely on our eyes for more and more, like we currently rely on our face. I, I rely on my face to unlock my phone. My eyes are obviously part of that. Uh, that <laughs> obviously. Hot takes. Hot takes on the Weird Things podcast. Obviously. Well, no, but, but now all of a sudden you're you're not just volunteer you're not just like oh the, the the premise of like face unlock is your face is unique hooray you can unlock your your phone with it sure. but what we did not assume is like oh also I'm giving you all my medical data yeah like, uh, well there's there's a meant. there's a new development now in machine medical machine vision uh where they are using machine vision to detect signs of cancer uh, in um, in a lot of uh, like uh, 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 breast examinations for cancer, and it's actually got uh, some doctors and researchers a, a, a little skeptical or a little anxious because well, uh, well, because there was for years they recommended like uh, yearly mammograms, and then at some point they ran the numbers and said, hey, you know what this is leading to? A bunch of false positives. So yes. everybody, please stop getting yearly mammograms. And and it's also that cancer is not a binary, right? Sometimes you might have a thing and it's it'll be fine, or or, or at least it won't. Uh, as uh, for example, prostate cancer is a, a, a statistical uh, surprise to me when I found out that the likelihood of a man getting prostate cancer is a hundred percent. All you have to do is live long enough to get prostate cancer, yeah. and then once you got it, uh, you'll very likely die of something else before prostate cancer. Yeah. Uh, so this is this this is a sort of a response to a Google. Google did a uh, is using their machine learning technology, and they put out a paper um, of spotting these various um, I guess lesions um, in various mammograms. And uh, so some of the response has been, well, it can lead to overdiagnosing. Uh, you, there are concerns about false positives, um, and uh, and the fact that the research study was uh, a binary, it is or is not cancer, when there is kind of a middle area in terms of uh, the degree of severity. Yeah, well, because even even a, a mole is messed up tissue. Technically, <laughs> it's, 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 so it's like yeah. there's a spectrum of messed up tissue and uh, uh, there, there's everything from like quality of life to consider. Um, man, that's that's heavy stuff. Um, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so the, the, the concern is that, you know, to Brian's point, that if, if you know, yearly mammograms were something that, that we needed to stop advising because you're going to get false positives, that having this binary decision with uh, uh, the, the, all the authority that we kind of assign to these AI uh, uh, decision makers would would lead to more panic and more false positive, or at least 
uh, a, a lack the nuance that we should have in these well, kind of and situations. Plus, plus also yeah. there's that weird uh, cognitive bias that causes us to deeply crave 100% safety. And it's like, uh, let's say, hey, man, for 100 bucks, I can offer you 98% safety while you're driving. Or for $10,000, I can offer you 100 percent safety it's like we will spend that ten thousand dollars for that hundred percent safety so as a result you get a bunch of people that, that are like well just to be safe let me have a complete double mastectomy preemptively because i'm so scared of it being a problem down the road mm -hmm. And the other thing is um you know as we've talked a, we've talked a lot about uh, automation replacing workers that this sort of technology might replace uh radiologists but uh Another thing that the researchers sort of in response to this Google paper say is there's a lot that goes into 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 screenings and, and diagnoses that still are are not easy to replace yet in terms of uh, uh, diagnosing or scheduling treatments and, and dosage and, and such. So uh, that's that's the first part. So there's this kind of a, a triptych here of AI stories here. So that's the first one uh, detecting cancer. The other one you've probably heard uh is the coronavirus out of uh out of china yeah dude uh hey here's a here's a fun uh <laughs> i was reading the, <laughs> the news headlines today um china has said two things they've said there are only two to three thousand cases they've also said we're building an entire pop-up hospital dedicated entirely to this virus right. and it occurred to me uh that's a bit weird. That's a that's that's a bit of a lot to that's do lot. in response to only two to three thousand cases. I mean, the thought the, what I saw is that the quarantine in China was so large it encompassed about thirty five million people. Uh, yes, they also so. extended Chinese New Year by three days. Just <laughs> uh, this is a real thing. Yeah? Just to yeah. tell everybody to please stay home and don't travel. Wow. But but also same mouth. Only two to three thousand cases. <laughs> yeah, obviously China, but. Let's take this moment to understand that no matter what problems we have with our free press in America specifically, the fact that we have decoupled information dissemination from the government uh, uh, is a, a valuable thing because uh, China does not have that. Uh, what the, uh, the Chinese government says goes, and if they don't like Anything that is even being said on social media, they will make sure that it is not said. That being uh, uh, stated, as I understand it, Wuhan, which is where uh, this had originated, is roughly the uh, population of London and has been uh, quarantined now. I was watching clips that apparently on social media that one of the, the viral posts that was going around was – everybody yell this one thing and there's this video of just like outside you know just like looking outside the window of just people on the streets just and from all these like uh, uh high rises just yelling this like statement that roughly translated into uh english means like we'll carry on or something like that but it is a wow. very 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 weird scene there and there are like like brian mentioned it's lunar new year which means a lot of people travel. They go back home to go be with their families. So this happened, uh, this exploded at, or maybe because of this this situation at at a very inopportune time, including for international travel. Uh, you know what was really wild? I was talking to a, a friend of ours who's coming out to shoot Scam Nation episodes, Alan Paletti. Uh, he was having trouble this morning because he was he was watching some of the viral posts and there are people who, you know, are, are you know, there's videos of them screaming, you know, they've had family members and the, the hospitals are full. Don't worry, only two to three thousand people. Um, the uh, 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 But he wanted to make a donation. And whereas like for a lot of disasters, Red Cross instantly up when the Australian wildfires hit, it was very, you know, instantly everybody knew, you know, here's where you give money to to do it. He said he couldn't find where to donate. And I wonder if that has to do with uh, with uh, like like uh, you know the the not so free press in in china oh maybe maybe where, the, where it's just it's, like like the official line is we've got it let the adults control. handle everything you don't need to do anything 
Uh, but 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 I, if anybody knows of a place to you know help or donate or whatever, but but that was a very curious problem that I hadn't heard of before. Uh, apparently, the World Health Organization has not designated it an international public health emergency yet. Uh, so it could be that they're waiting for that, uh, or it could be yeah that the Red Cross maybe has interfacing issues with China. But there's an AI twist to the coronavirus. Mm. Okay. So in America. Uh, it seems that the fifth confirmed uh, case of the coronavirus, the 2019 coronavirus, I think is what they're technically calling it, uh, has been uh, has been confirmed by the CDC, and uh, supposedly AI uh, was what was used to kind of determine that there is going to be an epidemic. Uh, there is a company called Blue Dot that uses airline ticket data to uh, uh, try to predict the spread um, of diseases like this. They've apparently used it multiple times in the past uh, for other, uh, uh, other, other diseases. I want to say uh, SARS even. even. No, I'm sorry. That, that was the guy who started Blue Dot uh, was oh, studying wow. SARS. All right. but so, so what I'm guessing is you have this knowledge of outbreaks, right? And then you also scrape all these uh, uh, airline sites. So while they don't likely have access to exactly how, you know, who's on what flight, you mm. can right now just go and try to like buy every ticket on an airplane uh, through a search function. You can automate that and just see how many seats are available per flight. Well, and uh, I think, and I think they're also using it to sort of, work backwards and and that might be how they uh originated it as from wuhan uh by looking yeah. at, at at travel and outbreak i guess patterns that's fascinating uh, uh and, and so they, they they were the first ones to say hey this might be a major problem because we have a lot of people that are leaving mm -hmm. this area that that you know it, it can go from a regional thing to an international thing much real, real 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 fast if we don't get on top of it it's it's interesting because there was uh, one of the top stories on the Austin subreddit recently had the title when not if it happens and it was about how the you know just looking at how much dead wood is around and how dry Austin is um, Austin is apparently a top candidate for a uh, mega wildfire in in, in some time in the future um and that's something that intuitively like like you could walk around and see like wow this is a lot of dry dead wood what would happen if a spark went down there but you can't see uh how many people are getting sick in what in what location so in that regard this does seem like a uniquely perfect problem to have ai help enhance our our intuitive understanding of yeah uh th this this is a a, a really strong use of ai to help you know, medical profession. I mean, with an epidemic, suddenly it's an international issue, and you're dealing with all sorts of data from different agencies. And having something that can say, "Oh, we can probably trace it back to this," I'm sure helps out a lot, especially if you can cut down the time it takes to determine that. Yeah, uh, we have one last AI story here. Uh, this one's this one's a little more of a state side. Uh, you know, what 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 are some of the features you would uh, Put on uh, what you would say are on cop cars. On, on sorry, police cop vehicles. cars? Yeah, police vehicles. Police vehicles? Some um, of the features. Uh, cheerful slogans like to protect and serve. Okay, sure. Morale boosters. Yeah, Justin. Uh, wait, sorry. My, 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 my mind was elsewhere. Read the question again. Cop cars. <laughs> cop cars. What would you put on? What are some of the features of cop cars? Features of cop cars. Uh, uh, well, I mean, you got the lights. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. No, you're right. Yeah. No, those pretty big part of the cop car. M motors, wheels, <laughs> wheels the rims. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, high contrast colors so that you can you can see it from far away and know to get out of the way. Right. Some of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Noise. Whatever you know. Speaker system that makes really 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 loud noises. That, big old uh, numbers. Numbers on the side because they're a sports yeah. team. Numbers are important. Uh, anything else? I'm waiting for. I'm uh, trying to. Well, I'm trying to fish uh, yeah. for one. Door, doors that doors that only uh, open from one way. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's good. Um, man, uh, since it's an AI story, mm -hmm. 
God, I, I, I want to speculate. Like, they don't have, like, crazy QR codes on them or something, do they? Not QR codes. In fact, I don't think you need to get crazy with the idea of what this is. I think there's one thing. I think there's a. I think there's oh, something. they got computers. I mean, like, you ever like look into a cop car and they've got like those like uh, as thick as a uh, looks, a cinder block, you know, computers that that flip out. Yeah, it looks like Knight Rider in there. It's like they're doing everything that they tell people not to do with distracted dr driving, <laughs> where it's just like, <laughs> hey man, don't look at your phone. While meanwhile, we have a multi monitor gaming rig set up <laughs> yeah, in our car. Yeah, it's like this three monitor array and uh, you know the 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 the, the red vine dispenser from Wayne's World. Like. <laughs> playing, playing cod blops in the front seat. Okay, so it's very close. Maybe any any other technology features on a cop car you can think of? I mean, radios. They, they got them radios. They're sure. always they're always saying Seven Mary Three. <laughs> That's for oh yeah. Okay. Uh, any last guesses? Um. Oh man. No, there's there's an there's, I think there's an obvious one. You maybe it's maybe it's not so obvious. An engine. <laughs> is it, is it that obvious? No, uh, a nightstick. No, no, no. Uh, cameras. Oh, dash cams, dash cams. Not yeah. just da not dash cams though. Uh, license plate readers. You guys have uh, surely. Oh, um, is is this the thing where it's constantly running the numbers on every license plate that goes by to find out who's got a warrant or uh, right. an outstanding parking ticket? That's right. AI license plate readers have become much more commoditized. Apparently, it used to cost in the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range to install these systems on the cars, and now they have come down in price to about fifty dollars a month. Ooh, how do we feel about that? That's that's the question. Uh, oh, 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 and so basically, what you're looking at there is now. You're not getting pulled over. You might not. You are opening up to the possibility that you are not getting pull pulled over for whatever crime you may or may not be doing, but rather because you they will now know with certainty whether or not there's another reason that you should get pulled over. Well, and that's always been the habit of, of as I have heard it, I don't know, I'm sure this is all apocryphal, but the whole reason they pull you over for expired tags is because people who can't be bothered to keep their tags up to date tend to be the kind of people with unpaid parking tickets, who have outstanding warrants, yeah. who haven't responded to jury summonses or, or what have you. Um, uh, but, but now you, you get to 100x this and 1000 exit at scale. And when you, when you go up to scale, think of all of the other uh, so part of this, part of the thing that uh, uh, advocates uh, for self-regulation or regulation of AI uh, license plate readers are, is that this creates a ton of what they call historical data. They will just know where license plates were because these cars have GPS. Ooh. They will know when they were scanned. So they will know who was parked in a certain area when as, as these cars drive by. There are not... Uh, in most states uh, in America, there are not regulations on how that data is stored or used or encoded or how long it is held on to. That's wild because, like, have you guys had that moment with your iPhone where you just look at the screen and it's like, uh, hey, you ready to head over to wherever? And I'm like, I don't remember telling you that I go to wherever. And, and, and you realize that the phone is just like, well, I've been watching and it seems like around this time, every Monday you head to wherever. And I, yeah. and, and I'm like, uh, where, where am I at on that? Now, and now Apple has at least publicly acted like they're trying to keep all that fairly confidential, but on that's device. a disturbing idea that forces completely outside of you can play the same game just with, with so cameras knowing, the go ahead. Yeah, the larger issue with a lot of these things is not that the technology is unmanageable. It is that our power structures are not ready for them, or we don't feel confidence that uh, uh, the, these things are going to be put in. I, I, I had this situation on the mailing list that I put out at freepoliticalnewsletter.com where I, I put out a story about electronic voting, and I, I got a bunch of good emails back and forth on why it's a good idea, why it's a bad idea. I tend to be bullish on electronic voting because I don't necessarily believe that the system we have now is not subject to voter fraud. It is just a system of voter fraud that we have come to understand and accept and that we would just have to understand and accept that there would be new ways for people to try to game that system. But the thing that did shake me was not the abstract idea of electronic voting, but rather the idea of 
who would be putting it in and whether or not the safeguards of that electronic voting are ready to handle it. Mm-hmm. Like, because this is a volunteer system. There's no uniform way that we do it nationally. It's it's kind of the reason why we have a fairly safe electoral system nationally is because to try and rig every weird, quirky, volunteer-staffed uh, um, um, station is almost impossible. If we had a formal, uniform, national way of doing it, it'd be a lot easier to hack. But I, I, I think that there is this idea with, with this situation, it's not that, all right, let's imagine a world where that reader cannot pull data until you have been stopped for something else, right? And that there is some kind of blockchain proof uh, that we are always able to see, or at least somebody, if they go to trial for for some uh, uh, situation, will always be able to see whether or not the officer got that information before they were that they were pulled over, and that is something that could get your case tossed out of court, for example, right? Like, in that scenario, we might be like, oh, you want to know what? Here, there are responsible ways of doing this. But that's not where we, where we are right now. Where we are right now is we don't even know if this is encoded correctly. We don't even know, like, like, like where it's going or how long it's kept. We haven't even had these discussions, and that's where, and hopefully, these kinds of, of situations spur that 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 kind of uh, uh, pushing forward of the situation. Now, uh, the other thing to note, so we, we started talking about this about uh, cameras affixed to police cars, but part of what makes this technology so much cheaper is that it's not a hardware solution, it's software. And so you don't have to just have this on uh, cars, you can put this on stationary cameras. Yeah, like red light cameras and all that stuff. Right. There was... Um... Recently, uh, again, back to Austin, because I follow this stuff, um, they banned citywide, or I believe countywide, uh, uh, all red light cameras. So the cameras are all still there, and the yeah. infrastructure is still there, but they're all switched off. And this seems to be, if there's a software solution, I would not be surprised at all if somebody were to say, hey, we all agree, red light cameras are dangerous and bad. But what about criminal hot pursuit catching cameras Let's or, the bad or silver alert cameras or whatever? What if we turn it back on just a little bit and only use it for this perfectly genuine, benign purpose? And if you said it in a more genuine way, that would probably be a good usage if we knew that there were self-imposed regulations on how this stuff worked. Which is, uh, so there's a company that is sort of the leader in this technology called Axon, A-X-O-N that provides a lot of this technology, hardware and software. And they put out a uh, an ethics report on kind of the state of, of this technology. And they called for a, a, quite a number of things, including uh, transparency of data, time limits on holding data, uh, requiring human verification of data uh, in cases of like pulling someone over or obviously in, in yeah. court cases. Uh, community input so that the community can can have a say in uh, how these things get used. Also, um, uh, the ability to selectively use these technologies. So, um, uh, and going along with community or uh, government, uh, I, I don't know, a direction, say, okay, use this technology, but don't use it for low-level things like uh, expired tags or parking tickets. Only use it in X, Y, or Z cases. Don't use it in immigration-related cases. Now, am, am I right, Justin, in understanding that all of this is well and good, and even the red light cameras in Austin and all that stuff, like, that's yeah, in general how we want our police departments to run. But all of that discussion goes out the window when it comes to national security interests. Like, you could just count that they're doing whatever, however they want. In a world where the NSA has spent half a century listening to as many phone calls as they feel like at any given time, as long as it was to protect, you know, national security, I mean, I can't imagine that this doesn't already exist in, in a million different ways. Uh, Yeah. There's a reason why when national manhunts happen and you start to call in the big boys, things wrap up real quick. <laughs> like there, there is, I would be curious to see if somebody would be able to like hide out on the level that, that, that even like, let's say the, the DC sniper or, or, or the Unabomber or something like that 
Uh, although both of those cases were fairly low fidelity, which is part of the reason why they were able to stay out on the lamb so long. So, uh, uh, yeah, and I think even even then, considering how much, you know, whatever your specific hole in the internet can also be assigned to you, uh, let alone with all these things, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, these are going to be used. Uh, uh, in, in, in the case of national security, a lot of the community decisions that are made can be superseded because also it's like, right. who's going to say no? Like, uh, especially if it's something that we, we all like, Oh, well, obviously we can. But I, I think what makes it um, a, a more contemporary issue, because yeah, like national security has always had wide reaching power, much, much more yeah. technology uh, at its fingertips. But it, it's very similar to me, like uh, the the Ring network of videos of, of how Ring is partnering with with local police forces to work together and share information, and how yes, that's probably not any different than a CCTV network, but it is bringing more of that power down to the local level. Yeah, you know, um, uh, and, and I think Justin hit the nail on the head where it's essentially. It's 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 what we don't know that we don't know. That is the problem. We did not know uh, 10 years ago that all the data that Facebook was collecting could be used for uh, fairly intrusive and effective uh, voter manipulation and so on. And so as a result, we had no reason to fear it. But now I think we've. We figured out that uh, that, that, that 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 caution is is the better part of valor valor. <laughs> Well, I mean, and, and even if you understood what I mean, targeted advertising is not anything new. It 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 was it was always the the foundation for which you know Facebook and Google were, uh, if not built on, certainly heralded as gigantic profit centers for. Uh, the the larger question is, what is the saturation point for that knowledge? So if we know, when is it? What when do we as a society know? Right. Like, is it when my mom knows? <laughs> is it when Brian's dad knows? Is it when Bryce's grandparents know? Like, uh, of how are we uh, when do we consider ourselves educated? And then past that, when do we start making some of the hard decisions on how much data, when it's used and why it's used? These are like fundamental bedrock decisions that we have to make because they affect every element of our lives. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what's not a hard decision. What? Is to support this very podcast by heading on over Hell, to patreon.com. Yeah. <laughs> Head on over there, man. Look, uh, uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. We, 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 we like money, man. We love it. Uh, <laughs> it's great. So come on over right now and, and get, get involved, uh, kick in a little bit, you know, it's funny because, you know, when I did the the Raise the Dead podcast, I got a lot of people that were emailing me for the first time and a lot of like quiet supporters, people who uh, uh, have like, they'll always be like, oh, I've been listening to you since blank. You've never seen me in a chat room. You've never seen me on Twitter. You've never seen me in all these other places where you interact with uh, supporters. But almost universally, weird things is there on that list. And so I want to thank everybody, A, for listening and B, if you aren't already a patron. Just consider it. Just consider throwing us a, a few, uh, a few, a few coins here for getting out and giving you this podcast each and every week. Hells yeah! And if you don't, if you don't want to do Patreon, you can also support us. Uh, when we launched this studio, the folks over at Doghouse Systems set us up with a bunch of systems. Uh, we're still using them and powering everything. We're only a couple months into promoing them, uh, and sooner or later, you're going to buy a PC. When you do, use promo code Rogue at checkout, get something free. You can go to DoghouseSystems.com/v/Rogue and say thank you for to them for supporting Weird Things. There you go. I want to show you guys something. This is a this is a vi I'm going to show the guys a video. Uh, Brian, I'm going to have you be in charge of describing all right uh, what we're looking at. So I haven't started playing it yet. Okay. What do you see? Uh, well, I see a, a grid of 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 six things. It says gantry at 90 degrees, and there's various iteration. No rad sheet in Z direction, and then there's rad sheet in X Y direction. That's right. Which uh huh. All right. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to hit play here on this video. And it looks like it looks like a Taurus with some lights in there. Maybe like a imagine imagine looking at a FLIR uh, sniper scope maybe. It uh, it looks like some imagine you're looking down 
the scope of a sniper rifle and somebody's trying to annoy you by slowly, you know, running a, a laser pointer over over it. Okay. Justin, what, what would you, is there, is there, do, do you have any other similar uh, feelings about this video? Yeah, it, it definitely, the, the, the big thing that I, I can't wrap my head around is that it, it kind of looks like the white border would be containing whatever's in the center of it, but that does not seem to be the case. Like that there is, that this is a reading that goes throughout the totality of uh, whatever this kind of uh, uh, white chocolate covered almond that we are looking at. Oh, uh, okay. And, and you know what? Dead polymers in the chat uh, has a good metaphor. If, if you've ever had an eye scan where they want to look at the back of your, of your retina and, and they, they, they sweep it across your vision, it looks a little bit like that. It does look a little bit like that. Well, let me show you uh, 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 evidence number two. This is the second video here. Oh, my God. This is a straight-up horror movie. Uh, you, have, <laughs> you have somebody... <laughs> you have uh, Eli Roth's newest coming out, where somebody is trapped, their face in a halo. Picture, picture, uh, you know, a halo, but but across instead of um, uh, at the top of the skull, it's across uh, the nose midsection. Okay, it looks like parts of it have been blurred out. I assume for privacy concerns, because yes. this looks like a medical thing. Right. And there are three things that look the same. It says real time beam, planned contour, and cumulative beam. I cannot. Tell the difference oh no, no no wait wait there's like glowing she's got she's got blue flames coming out of her eyes is what it looks like all right so we're taking a look what's the thing in the background do you see that it so it looks like some kind of mri machine i would guess yeah, like a cat scan slowly, maybe yeah so slowly <gasps> are they around. shooting a beam through her head well they were already gonna do that Okay. I mean, I guess that's already not new. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that happens with so, any x-ray. Uh, so, so, but, uh, go ahead. Yeah, basically, it, it looks like what we are watching here is exactly what this, you know, the, one of these, you know, x-ray, MRI machine uh, actually is doing. Like, like, exactly what the path of the laser is or, or, or the intensity of it. Is that it? Uh, th that's all very close. So, uh, do you, you guys are probably aware of, uh, let me get the right word here. Cause I have it here. Um, radiation treatment, radiotherapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, it was kind of funny because I was <laughs> expecting to hear a word I've not heard before. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. So apparently when, uh, when patients undergo radiotherapy, they have, uh, it is, it is a not uncommon, uh, experience that they have seen flashes of light in their eyes that are not explainable by you know the environment they're not lights on while they're having the therapy yeah sure uh, for a long time we did not really know why that was happening or or if it was really happening uh but now with a new paper we have found that uh, uh it is a real phenomenon <gasps> it is uh the Cherenkov effect so that people who are undergoing this radiotherapy the radiation is interacting with the uh, ooh, 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 the vitreous fluid of their eyes, and it is creating a visible light. Wow, that's viewable from the outside. Uh, viewable from the inside. I don't. I'd have to look and see but, if it's but, actually. But the point the point is, it's not just like a sensory thing. Like we did, uh, we we stupidly electrified my brain for a, a modern rogue thing. And when I turned on the switch, <laughs> um, uh, there was a brief. I saw a flash of 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 kind of white light that was very surprising. Yeah. Um, uh, I am pretty certain that only happened because of my nerve endings firing and that there was no actual light. But but this you're, seems like you're saying there's actual light happening inside their eyes. So it, it's called the Cherenkov effect. This is the same effect that causes radi uh, ra uh, uh, excuse me uh, 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 nuclear reactors to glow blue, if you've ever seen video of that. Uh, and it's 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 a, a weird reaction with with radiation and physical physical fluids. That is insane. It's like it's like your it's like your eyeballs have come out of 
a 1980s sci-fi movie and they needed to put plasma balls in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plasma balls. That's yeah. Uh, but what's nice about this? This might be like, oh, okay. So we they, they were right. Uh, it, it actually means that doctors now know that it's a real thing and that they can be knowledgeable about. Uh, when patients experience this, doctors can actually say, yes, that's a real thing that happens. Science tells us that that's real, uh, which helps with, wow. you know, patient quality of life. Um, so, that is crazy. Well, you know what's also crazy. So you might remember this was, let me see when this was. I think this was last year uh, when NASA revealed, yeah, April 2019, the first direct image of a black hole you guys remember this yeah this was if i'm remembering right uh, a black hole was between wait was was there like a, a star behind it and it was occluded or or that's just what all the stuff around a black hole looks like uh yeah, okay yeah. <laughs> or they just were marketing for honey nut cheerio <laughs> yeah because it looks like a blurry little a little donut a little cheerio so NASA yeah. has released a new visualization of a black hole. We're looking at a GIF of it now. Uh, what do you guys think? It, I think it's shockingly close to the representation in the movie Interstellar, which famously was supposedly very well researched and very mathematical and very realistic. So, so uh, I guess I guess uh, kudos to uh, to Interstellar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it looks like. There is kind of like a a conveyor belt that then goes uh uh you know horizontally and then vertically as if it were placed up against a wall. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, it looks like then... a Mario Kart uh, racetrack where it's flat <laughs> yeah, for about two hundred and seventy degrees yeah. and then goes ninety degrees up for the last quarter there. But then there's also and then also oh it's yeah, there's like a little loop de loop the bottom part of a loop de loop below it. So it, it both completes a circle, uh, you know, a uh, flat, and then a a circle sideways, if that makes sense. Uh, now, uh, but I, yeah, that's I some wild stuff. I want to show you. Apparently, uh, the direct image. Uh, th these are not the first simulations of what black hole looks like. Black holes look like. Uh, I want to show you this image here, uh, Justin. How would you describe this image here? This looks a little bit more like a cave. Like there's like like there's maybe like a big open mouthed uh of uh, igloo, you know uh, like uh, there's there's no little tunnel coming out of it. It's just uh sort of the the front face of it has been removed. I mean uh, I I yes and uh it <laughs> that is the perfect image if you added the layer on top of it that it is an eighth grade art project to teach pointillism <laughs> where <laughs> it's all, the image is made entirely of individual dots so this image was created in 1978 by john pierre luminette uh and was plotted by hand wow so, so i was right it you was were right great pointillism, it is pointillism. <laughs> that's amazing uh so uh we now have even more higher fidelity uh I images of black holes but uh that's pretty but that cool. dude, that dude nailed it. That yeah. dude, you know, a uh, uh, shout out to him. Apparently, or... there's an even older image that they did not include in this article from the 1960s that was made using punch cards in an IBM 7040 computer. And there's an even older one from 1940s oh. that's made with a black crayon. I see. Okay, so uh, uh, this this 1978 uh, hand plotted image is the data from that punch card image. Oh wow. Here we go. So, uh, good work, everybody. Good work, science. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. One last story. We've talked about cr the CRISPR babies. You guys remember talking about the CRISPR babies? Yeah. Yes. These are these are designer oh. the, the 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 beginning stages of of the the reality for which Gattaca predicted, where you would be able to eradicate certain elements in your child's unborn child's dna right uh, and more specifically uh the case of lulu and nana two babies that were genetically modified using crispr unethically uh as embryos and then were uh given uh birth or were born so there's new details about that uh case out of china um so if you don't remember lulu and nana they were unethically gen genetically modified uh, so there, the test that was. Being... Wait, 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 could, could, could we elaborate on what you mean by unethically? Sure. <laughs> like, like, well, now that we it have, it sounds like just a universal value judgment that you're making. Well, on, it also, on it also just, 
It also, it also just sounds like a, a, a Q explaining to Bond the uh, hench people that, that he is going to have to take out. Like, like well, you see, Bond, uh, uh, unethically genetically modified, they're able to swim for up to 50 hours. It, it also sounds a little bit like AM talk radio, like, these unethical babies. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of it is that we didn't have as much details about it because this took place in China and it was uh, obviously a big sort of government thing uh where now we have some more information so uh the the modification that was done to the to lulu and nana as uh, embryos was to remove the ccr5 gene this is apparently the gene that is involved in um letting hiv take hold in the body so if you don't have it or if you have a modified version of it you would be much more resistant to hiv um, so yeah, so you can get you can be in all the HIV situations that you want, and <laughs> HIV is gonna come up and be like, "Hey, where do I hook in?" and and your body's gonna be like, "Oop, sorry, man." Uh, <laughs> no, under new no. You know what? They are sounding like unethical babies now. <laughs> <laughs> and part of this was because the embryo that that uh, uh, these were from, the father of that embryo did have HIV, so there was a concern, I guess, about um, uh, passing HIV down uh, genetically. So the first failure of the experiment is that they actually didn't modify the CCR5 gene. They modified stuff around the gene. So they took a shot and they missed. So so their aim was was off. Right. Um, uh, and so we don't even know what the effects would have been for that. So it's a very imprecise execution. The other issue is something called mosaic. Do you guys have uh, an idea of what mosaic might be? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, I think it's an open source browser now, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when an embryo has edited and unedited cells mixed together, uh, that's called mosaic, where your cells just have two different sets of, of information going on. Um, apparently, early testing had shown a small amount of mos the mosaic effect, uh, but now that the, the babies have been born, it is pretty clear that um, they have pretty prominently... Uh, different cell is is this uh, the same thing as a chimera because we've talked previously on the show about um you know sometimes a single cell splits into two babies you have identical twins sometimes you have fraternal twins that sort of mash together and become one baby and as a result you have a mishmash of, of two separate sets of dna i think that's roughly i think that's broadly how it how to take it yes um and so this is uh, this is all pretty bad. So not only did they not even hit the right mark, they didn't even hit all the cells. Um, oh, gee. And so, so way to way to be unethical and screw it up. <laughs> well, and the other thing, well, that, um, and that's that, that's really where the ethics comes in, right? Like when people are we like, don't... oh, well, like how? What, why is it unethical? Who do they hurt? These children. We don't know. Like if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And and the other issue is that uh, this is not exactly meeting an unmet demand. So I'm going to read from the Science Alert article. Uh, While the twin's father was HIV positive, there was already a well-established way to prevent an HIV positive father from infecting embryos. This sperm washing method was actually created um, uh, by uh, possibly by the same team. The only benefit in the attempted gene modification, if proven, would have been a reduced risk of HIV infection for the twins later in life, but there are already safer ways of controlling the risk of infection of HIV, such as condoms and uh, testing blood donation. So uh, this is it, it, this was kind of talking about designer children. This was kind of in that vein, a almost vanity sort of project conceptually, because there are better ways to remove HIV from embryos. Do, do you think they were just? I mean, I mean, I know uh, in the scientific realm, there's a lot of value to being first to publish or or to get credit for x y and z is this is this a case of jurassic park where they, they didn't uh, stop to ask whether they should i i wouldn't be surprised you know if it was like hey uh, we're, we're doing this and expecting oh we were gonna get it we got it right we nailed it and now it's a hooray we have all as a race as a, as a human species have bounded together uh in in another footstep uh when in reality they we're not prepared to to do this and and didn't really make the right call. Wow. So, uh, that's, so that's right. Yeah. So that's a, a CRISPR update. Um, that's it for news stories. You guys want to do picks? Heck yeah. Brian, what's your pick? I got a pick. What's your pick? Uh, 
In fact, I already said half of it. It's pick Pickard. Uh, my pick is Pickard. Picard, it's very good. Oh, Picard. Yeah, I did not expect it to be as good as it was. I deeply resented having to finally sign up for CBS All Access because we're covering <laughs> it on Cord Killers. I watched with uh, abject skepticism until the first three minutes made me tear up. And then uh, I, I got skeptical again for the first action set piece. And then uh, the rest of the show, I was just blown away. It was fantastic. It's turns out it's the best Star Trek Next Generation movie uh, of, of all of the movies. I think it might be. But yeah, it's better than First Contact. Maybe. I don't what know. Is, uh, what is the actual story of it? Because I know trailers have come out and I've not watched the trailers. It did seem like part of it took place in a winery. If you want me to spoil it, I will. But or uh, just I guess but, the conceit. But, well, no. Or is uh, that actually uh, a part it, of it too? It's it's in the universe canon that uh, uh, Jean Luc Picard. I, I think the last episode of the Next Generation, he becomes an old man and is dealing with a sort of mental breakdown. But he owns a winery called Chateau Picard or whatever. Um, this is this is that future. He's older now and he's uh, in the winery. But uh, but then there's a, uh, a a curious and and powerful emotional reason that uh this interesting uh character on the other side of the planet becomes of of his interest and uh okay. it's it's quite quite good they they do some tweaks on uh, they introduce a new st uh, uh, backstory like in the gap between the two um mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's too spoilery to say he's retired from starfleet and there's a a very strong reason that he retired from starfleet and he's still re resentful of of that oh, okay. um uh and so it's it's not a starfleet story so far at least it's a sean luke picard story oh, cool. and um uh yeah i like they nail it yeah it's great it's really great uh well worth signing up for the dang thing if you're a, a, a star trek fan there you go picard justin Picard. man you want to know what i <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to rely on uh, – we're, we're, we're back in that phase, folks, where uh, all I'm doing is reading things about old old times. So uh, I will I will pick uh, uh, The Making of the President, 1964, which is what I am reading now to the detriment of all other pop culture. You know what's funny <laughs> is I was going to make a joke that you moved from 1960 to 1961, <laughs> but that's pretty much yeah. what you've done. But you did it. <laughs> Basically. Uh, which yeah, which so president this, uh, is 1964? Uh, pardon my millennial. Oh, the 1964 race eventually is uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, now the incumbent president after the assassination of John F. Kennedy uh, versus Barry Goldwater on the Republican side. But this will be the second season of Raise the Dead uh, because, again, I feel like there are a lot of things in this election that we are actually seeing play out in real time. So uh, uh, I am I am both predicting that we are going to see a few things kind of unfold, and I'm, I'm curious to see what the similarities and differences are from uh, that election and the election that we are watching happen right now where another outsider to the party is uh, looking to uh, pull it far away from where the establishment wants it to be and we're going to see how the 2020 version of the establishment in the democratic party reacts comparatively to uh the 1964 version of the republican party uh but it'll be uh it'll be interesting and you know the the, the story is i i don't know if there's a better political writer than theodore white theodore white is uh who wrote all the making of the presidents uh, there is an element of, you know, a uh, 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 weight and whimsy in his writing that I feel like is totally missed in our in our modern coverage. Uh, you know, it 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 just brings number one an element of theatricality to it, but but it never really removes it from. I guess I don't know. I, the, the, my 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 problem with reading it and recommending it is. I love it, but I'm reading it kind of with a stripping out of like understanding that that this was written as mythology making, you know, so I'm like reading it and and being 
impressed with all the flourishes of like, oh, this is about the gallant great man and the you know the the the, the scoundrels that try to uh, uh, scuttle this and and the like fateful decisions that are made. But everything is being packaged, and so I can appreciate the packaging while also kind of stripping out some of the like. All right, but these were also humans that were doing human things, and they're, and they're not gods descended from Mount Olympus. So mm -hmm. I, I I would say I love it because I am able to do that. If you are also, then you will very much enjoy this look into history. Very nice. The making of the president in 1964. Uh, yeah. I got to pick. Uh, it is a show. It is on HBO. It is airing now. Uh, it's very good. And it is called The Outsider. Oh, wow. Uh, that was an outside pick. I was thinking, I was thinking, I don't think he's talking about the new Pope. No, I don't I'm, think he's talking about that new Hugh Laurie thing either. No, uh, <laughs> new, new Pope's good. Avenue 5. <laughs> I have not seen it yet. So I, I, uh, uh, I think it's, I think it's will be for some people. I, we, uh, I don't know. Um, but I, it, it's just one of those things where it's like with Armando Anucci. Boy, do you have a hell of a fastball. This fastball is talking about politics and doing conversations where mean people are being mean to each other in the political world, mm. and it can echo these real things that are happening uh, in a way that seem, makes it feel more true than the thing that we are watching on television because you're watching the duplicity of these people. I, I would be curious to see if you remove that element that is so great about the thick of it and veep where you're like, Oh, this is really what, you know, insert politicians name is like. And, and I'll bet you that, that they all call each other the C word constantly. And they say these like hilariously mean things to each other. Uh, I, when you remove that element of reality and you now put that dialogue on a spaceship, I wondered how that was going to how that was going to go. Uh, very quick review of Avenue Five is uh, it wants to be a comedy uh, on a spaceship, yeah. um, but also have real problems on on a spaceship. Um, it kind of reminds me of what I guess people expected the Orville would be, which is like kind of goofy. Yeah, the the Orville was, I, I believe, I, I did never watched it, but it was certainly marketed as a, a imagine comedy. it's a comedy. But it and, ended up being a very like real core sci fi or yeah, just Star basically <laughs> we're still doing Next Generation. Yeah, uh, where I, I don't think this one figures out. But The Outsider is very good. This is based off of uh, the Stephen King book, The Outsider, uh, and. Uh, it it is a true detective esque story of a man who is accused of of murdering and uh, uh, and sodomizing a young child um, in in the town that he lives, uh, but there is video evidence that he is two towns away at the time of the murder. Uh, but there's also uh, plenty of witnesses who saw him at around the time uh, up leading up to it, uh, tracking his actions after the fact. Um, and it leads into this very larger investigation of 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 other cases and other people. Uh, I think it's I think it's really cool. I am not I, I'm not like a Stephen King head. I don't know too many of of the works, uh, but this is really cool. I think this captured me more than Castle Rock did. I think. Oh wow! And you like that one? Uh, Castle Rock was pretty good, um, but this is like a detective story, and I I think I have a thing for murder mysteries. So. Um, this is very cool. It actually reminded me a lot of. Did either of you see the other HBO miniseries, The Night of? No, no. So that was a very similar thing of of a young uh, um, Middle Eastern guy in New York, I think, being falsely accused of a crime and the entire book being oh, thrown at him. Oh, yeah. No, was that that was that like a David Chase thing? There was some like like uh, HBO royalty to that miniseries. Uh, possibly. I from uh it's got john Turturro starring in it uh oh richard price wrote for that and he did the adaptation uh for this the outsider series so i think there's some connection okay. there um but uh uh but i think it's very similar in terms of like uh a someone seemingly being falsely accused and most people believing that he did it but one person really trying to prove him right um, but then it takes a totally different thing because it's Stephen King and there's weird supernatural stuff. So, hmm. uh, The Outsider, I think it's very good. If you got HBO, 
Uh, it's I think there are four episodes out now, and they're pretty good. Right on. Nice. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today here on The Weird Things Show. Brian, Justin, thank you so much. Yeah. How's it been, yep. Bryce? It's been weird. Boom. Hey, look at that. Good app, in the bank. Good app. Uh, oh, there was something I wanted to bring up for after things, and now I don't remember. I should have written it down, I guess. Huh. Um, all right, well, here, uh, two seconds. I'll be right back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Same, same here. I actually don't uh, mind just rolling straight into after things because uh, I got I got some errands to run. Well, I'm uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out what we will talk about. Uh, but no, go and take a look. Everybody can everybody tell me ideas for what we should talk about in after things. I thought I knew. Hard to ignore all the things we said. I wish I could change it. A little shaky. Our emotions got the best of us lately. I got issues, yeah, you got them too. I feel it's too bruised to fight. Ah, uh, was it about bite? Was it gonna be a bite and um... Fight? A Firefox or something. Firefox. All my memories being eaten up. Memory back. Huh. A reboot. No, no. Great. Uh. Have a good weekend, Jeff. Yep. Oh shit, man! Come on, Jinx. Oh. Uh, I I was I was back on stage at Piano Fight. Oh oh yeah, were you doing Quizitron? I did Quizitron last night. Oh nice. Night. Yeah. How was that? Was that good? Oh, it was good. It was good. I made sure I talked really really loud before I got brought on. <laughs> uh no no it was uh it was good it was actually a pretty good crowd man it was at fucking 10 p.m. at night. Like Woo. in the tent line, which is uh, dicey. But that was but, a weekend show, right? Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Oh night. wow! Oh, so. yeah. I was up, up past my bedtime on a Sunday night, uh, so I could do science comedy. <laughs> um. But uh, uh, yeah, no, it was uh, it was good. It was it was oh. it was a good time. What is it? Is is it just a trivia game, or is it more like a panel show thing? I don't I don't actually know Quizatron. It's it's kind of more like imagine a a slightly less structured version of like a British quiz show where yeah. like it's one part who can get the answer, but it's it's mostly who can make the funniest joke yeah. about the 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 quiz thing. So uh, normally there's like three science people and one or two comedians um 
and I usually wind up getting called in as one in one of the comedian slots because uh, the two masterminds behind the show are Keith Lil Jensen and Rebecca Watson, and Keith is a stand-up comic, uh, so he'll book a stand-up friend of his to do the show. And uh, stand-ups, as they often are, uh, flake out, and so I'll get a call, like, you know, with, with 48 hours to go on whether or not I'll do it. But this time it was two scientists and three stand-up comedians, which meant there was a lot less accurate information. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. It was a good time. Cool. Very cool. All right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Byte for, uh, for After Science. Oh, Byte. Oh, that sounds uh, fun. Well, uh, yeah, because I'm hearing about it the first time. Okay, cool. Well, uh, let's do After Things then. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, uh, your host, as always, and as it always has ever forever been. Uh, joined as always <laughs> by Justin Rockingham. Forever and ever, amen. Uh, hello. Hello, Bryce. And Brian Brushwood. Hey, beautiful people. So uh, After Things is the show where we talk about creativity, working online, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted to bring up, uh, this is a short topic today. Uh, Byte has launched. E yeah, I, I was. I, I had not heard anything about this, and uh, I, here's all I know about the story, and you could correct me on this. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, there was Vine, and it was good. The idea of six-second videos that looped was a joy for many, many people. Oh, yeah. Then Vine got purchased by Twitter, and in the, Twitter's infinite wisdom, it decided to ruin everything about Vine and then shut it down That's right. and say, uh, good thing we bought Vine, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and lo, there was a void in the hearts of many a youngster who wanted to tell very, very short-term, uh, short-format stories. And yeah. thus, because Instagram was a little too heavy, but Instagram was busy copying Snapchat and doing stories and stuff um, where people liked how short vines had to be six seconds where Instagram could be up to a minute. Right. And so, oh, they were, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, well, well, and I was going to say, and, and where we're at now is TikTok has filled the void, but even TikTok has a curious part of the story because TikTok was not TikTok in the board in the beginning. It was musically, which was dedicated to just doing lip syncing. And then they realized, Oh wait, everybody loved vine. Nobody's doing vine. We're going we're to gonna be vine. We're going to, we're going to be Vine. Congratulations. We're TikTok. Uh, well, there, I think part of that is that there was another, like TikTok was another platform and then they bought Musical.ly and then it was really the marriage of the two. Like Musical.ly was its own thing that was popular, but the, the marriage of that with TikTok and then becoming now this new and, and, and improved version is really what kind of took it off to the next level. Uh, the, the, the fascinating thing, if we can go back to the beginning of Vine, is if I remember correctly, was was Vine an app that was about to launch and then got then got bought by Twitter pre-launch? No, so it no. As a matter, it, no, it, it launched, was established, became beloved, and I mean, all, all actions that I saw on Vine with Twitter looked an awful lot like Twitter just buying up a piece of the competition saying, it's going to be another part of the ecosystem, and then just quietly killing it. Um, which brings us to this moment. No, wait, so it was, it, was, it was independent? Oh, I, I, I'm fairly certain it was, because I remember I was already on it, and I was already so hustling on it. It when was, it got bought by Twitter, and I remember worrying about, well, what's that going to mean for my following? Because I, I, I had like a million Vine followers, and then it got bought by Twitter. So Wikipedia says that Vine was founded in June 2012, acquired in, by Twitter in October 2012, and then launched January 2013. Wait, that can't be right. Yeah, which That's sounds crazy. right. I don't, I, can, I don't remember a time where Vine was not a part of Twitter. I remember, I remember it being it. It was it was purchased pre, pre launch, and so it was launched with like Twitter in mind, but it, it might was have a launched app. as a standalone app and then integrated later. That that Maybe must be the moment that I was thinking of because I enjoyed yes, the yes, standalone experience. 
And then they then they folded it into Twitter and ruined everything. Which, by the way, I'm, I'm like the king of accruing a lot of followers on, on platforms that, that die instantly. I had like 1.6 million Google Plus followers. <laughs> I had yeah, like 1.2 million Vine <laughs> followers. And then all that just folds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, it looks you, man. You got it. I mean, the, the, the difference is, though, with Vine, Vine really created its own culture. You know, a lot of the people sure. that are, are massive now really, really launched on Vine. And God, you know, that is that is something that if you are Twitter, you had the reins on and you willfully just folded it. Like they just folded Vine for, for God knows what reasons. Like it, that, that is. That is such a weird thing because they never really even did anything else with it. Like well, I, I, I think I, I, that there was a different division because because um, Twitter continues to push its video platform. It's uh, longer format, two minutes long, and then there are uh, verified. Uh, folks who can post longer videos and now they're tinkering with monetization and stuff. So uh, I, I, it, it feels to me like two different divisions, just, uh, you know, fussing about what their growth, one of them had the better, uh, growth pitch that looked like it would make money in the long term, And so that got the resources and choked out the oxygen on the other. But I remember at the time of vine shutting down that the conversation was, well, Twitter wasn't making money on vine. But then everyone said, well, you never put ads on Vine. You never even tried to monetize you never tried. it. You never tried to monetize it, which right. like the what you did realize was that celebrities were being born here. Like you they, they were they were creating an audience and they they had uh, they had survived Instagram video like that was another thing that that popped up. And this is pre stories right but there was now all of a sudden uh instagram was moving into video and you'd be able to do it and it wasn't it wasn't just going to be pictures but vine survived and i think maybe what part of the the thought was is like all right really like our big thing here is six seconds so mm -hmm. if we aren't going if if the future is and instagram is growing because they're doing more than six seconds then effectively we might as well just have Twitter video because we'll just remove the things. Cause if, sure. I, if we remove the limit on vine, then vines, not vine, well, except they fundamentally, I think misunderstood what the important part of vine was because all these people wound up going to YouTube. And yeah. now the new crop of what is happening is like the, the issue with vine wasn't that you could, that you needed to keep that six second thing sacrosanct. You had to add the stuff that TikTok has done, which is, hey, license music, make it easier to have these filters that that can can uh, gussy up the uh, uh, gussy up the video that it, the the video itself, add little text overlays to it. Like yeah. that's effectively what makes the TikTok medium so special. This uh, stop me if you've heard this before, both of you gentlemen, because I've only said it a billion times. This is the classic story of line extension. You have a young brand, Vine, but it's owned by Twitter. And you think, well, you know, nobody really knows what a Vine is compared to, I mean, everyone knows what a Twitter is. And so you decide to lean yeah. into the bigger brand. And in so doing, you devalue the original brand. You know, Twitter Twitter means one, it used to mean one thing, 140 characters. Now it means like 280 characters. Now it means videos up to five minutes long and monetization and live streams and short form videos. And and the more things something means, the more it means absolutely nothing. So, um, which, which brings us to this part of the bite story, because yes. I don't know from what you've said, I don't know that I've, heard this story and I'm really curious to see how it turns out. You're saying Byte was created by the guy who created Vine. Yes. And it sounds like it's the exact same thing. He's just doing Vine again. Uh, pretty much. The interface has changed, so it's not square videos like they were on Vine. Now they are uh, portrait, um, portrait 16 by 9, like TikTok has. It's a full screen user interface, so you're swiping through videos, not a feed mm -hmm. of stuff. You can uh, rebite people and share their videos with the people who are following you. Um, other than that, it seems like it's six seconds, and that's it. Can can I can I tell you um, 
if we could just put a pin in this conversation. Um, uh, l let me say one thing. Uh, I'm really interested how things work out for Byte. New conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, did you know I had a TV show on National Geographic called Hacking the System? I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, that ended. That ended. Uh -huh. um, new fact. Uh, uh, we launched a channel called The Modern Rogue. <laughs> uh, new story. Uh, did, did you know I pitched a show to Revision 3 called Scam School? <laughs> <laughs> yep. New fact. Uh -huh. We have a new series called Scam Nation. Yeah. Sure. Uh back to our conversation about Byte. Really interested <laughs> to, to hear <laughs> how it goes relaunching something. I want but I wonder like part of the problem is there is so much time between the death of Vine and the launch of what is now called Byte. Was it originally gonna be called V2? Mm. Um it, there's so much time and the landscape has shifted so wildly. That to try to stick to the original, it's six seconds, and that's it. That, to stick to that feels, uh, it, it feels more than just a biz, a, uh, a going to end a sentence and then start a new <laughs> sentence play. It feels different than what well, that and, transaction is. <laughs> and, 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 and also, there is this big difference because part of what makes TikTok special is that their preferred way for you to interact with it is to never make a choice as to what you're going to watch. Right. They're like, we know how to, how to figure out all these, uh, uh, of how to categorize all these kinds of videos. We know based on how long you linger and how many times it loops, how much you then like these kinds of videos. So all you ever have to do from the first moment you download the app is don't make, I mean, eventually you, you should make an account cause you're going to get some cool things, but you are just, consuming we will give you the thing that you like which is in a weird way the ai version of old media right like it is like we are the gatekeeper and you are going to enjoy our curated thing for you uh whereas bite is taking the way that it used to be where it's like okay follow all your favorites we'll so recommend people that are going to create your feed Weirdly, this is a recurring theme on Cord Killers is when when I gripe, um, one of the things I gripe constantly about is I don't want to have to choose anything. And, and we talked about the possibility of, you know, curated AIs that, that, that say, you know what, you don't even have to next a thing. We're just going to watch your eyes and notice, you know, we're going to monitor your your heart rate and we're going to we're going to figure it out for you what you seem to like. And, and in a weird way. Like I, you know, what we charitably call waterfall television. You know, you just want something on. You don't want to have to decide. Um, it seems like uh, 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 TikTok has really figured out a, a bunch of that. Yeah, I mean, when you when you first open the app, and like Justin was describing, you just get into it. Like you can pick topics of things that you you like, but you just get into it. You don't. It doesn't ask you to sign up. It doesn't do any of that. It's just here's a lot of stuff. Just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Which I I, I that that feedback loop of I watch the thing I can either rewatch it immediately or I could just go to the next thing. Like that feedback loop is so uh, sticky. Like it is no wonder that byte has, that's the major difference in byte is that that's the UI change of doing that exact same thing. Loop video, swipe to the next video. Do you think the, but, but also, uh, uh, the, 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 the thing that made TikTok So vine to me artistically, uh, became what it was because the videos that would come out of there were a product of the camera. So the camera on Vine was hit a button. As long as you had your, your finger down, it's recording. To stop recording, you lift your finger. Uh, and so you wound up getting a lot of these uh, like shot, reverse shot of like, like, I'm one person. Now I'm another person. Now I'm another person. So it's like, one person talking to each other was like a huge thing, right? Uh, which was was great. But what TikTok took to the next level was understanding, like, all right, what sucks about videos? Uh, the lighting often sucks, uh, but it's nothing compared to the sound. Sound is amateurish. It is very hard to do good sound, and so or that's where. In the opposite, just just to to, to piggyback on that. If you have easy sound or if you can share sounds, if you can make stuff around sounds, that makes That's, it easier yeah. to make stuff. Yeah. 
and that's and that's the thing is that now taking sound out of the equation and to a certain extent taking lighting out of the equation with filters and stuff, you now all of a sudden are able to go from what would look like a very amateurish video to having it look very much more professional, feel so, much more professional because you're able to just have the soundtracks to stuff. Uh, and quickly. now that, that also helps virality because now that's the meme. Well, the meme and, is... Uh, sorry, uh, uh, not just vi virality within the app, but also like, like, does this content look like it could show up on uh, Sports Center or whatever? Like, 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 would any of this ever show up on national television? Uh, and and that that's a hard no when it's just an iPhone audio and and crappy lighting. But the exact same content, you know, with uh, like you guys are saying, set around music and with a. A, a painted on Snapchat filter or whatever totally could. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, last night, uh, Lil Nas X won a couple Grammys. And the part of the reason why was because his song blew up on TikTok because the viral meme was for Old Town Road, uh, as it was a very, uh, you know, rap song. You just have people in their regular clothes and then it gets into this. You know, I got the horses in the back, which sounds very country. And now all of a sudden you go ahead and get into your into your country clothes. And now you're kind of doing a little hoedown dance. And and there we go. It's like that's one of those moments. The reason why the, the shot reverse shot stuff worked was because we can all kind of understand that. And, and we can wrap our head around these internal conversations that we all that are going on in our heads all the time. Uh, with this, it is that to the next level of like, oh. Okay, regular clothes, country clothes. We all have a little countryside, I guess. Like that's that's fun. It's fun how people iterate on top of that. It's it's the the best ideas, the best things that spread are the ones where you can get a hundred percent of it immediately, if not on like a, a kind of primal level. Right. When you when you see a meme and in TikTok, the way TikTok is set up with its discovery stuff where it just organically sends you to a lot of the sim a lot of the same types of things means that you can kind of understand a, a meme or whatever this trend is even if you couldn't describe it like talking about the old town yeah. road one it's very weird to describe like oh they play sounds like a country song but then or it sounds like a rap song but then the country comes in and then they're, they're doing the a line dance like it's very hard to describe and it doesn't sound very good when you hear it but when you see it multiple times and you just get an intrinsic feeling of what it is like that's some high level satisfaction in terms of feeling like you are understand in and understanding that community uh, yeah. so um with with bite what do you guys feel uh, uh, noted Xbox, uh, TikTok experts, Brian and Justin. Uh, what do you feel? How do you feel about Byte launching now in 2020? Um, that was my question to you, Bryce, is okay. you noted specifically the six second format. D does that just straight up feel dated to you? Um, it, uh, it It's tough because it's been so long since Vine and I feel like I was not huge on Vine at the time. I mean, lots of really great Vine stuff came out uh, a lot of people who were you know vine stars went on and did really cool youtube stuff um but i there's so much i like about tiktok that fits in the 15 second in the one minute category that just wouldn't be here um so it's still it's still early for me to try it out and i don't know who to find. the other tough thing is discovery right with tiktok you just if you if, it, if it can't figure something out it will just give you something where with Byte, I think it is very focused on who you're following. And, and I guess that's that's the thing that I think TikTok is was fascinating is that it wasn't just about that community. It was about understanding where it lived in a post-social network world, right? Because mm -hmm. Brian and I, one of our favorite kind of weekends ever was peach weekend we happened to be <laughs> yeah where we knew place. this thing was going to crater but we just embraced it whole hog peach is still good weekend. you can buy peach for like two hundred thousand dollars right now just Wait, really yeah the guy was like i it's still up but somebody please buy it <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was a moment where we had we could get this visceral thrill knowing that it was going to crater uh 
we get this visceral thrill of having a bunch of people at us, right? And now we could be kings of this platform for a weekend before everybody gets bored of it. Uh, what TikTok realized was, okay, the biggest pain point for people is, well, who do I follow? And what if the people that I follow suck and they just don't post enough? And now I've gone there. I feel like an idiot for opening this app. TikTok was like, never worry about that. In fact, never worry about following people. Yeah. Just go and, and here's content. We will make sure that the best content finds you. That's our job. That's not your job. In so fact, it's like even uh, it's even not as good following people only because – you start to see a lot of the same, like someone does a lot of these painting videos and then you're suddenly seeing a lot of painting videos and you're like, this is a lot of painting videos. But then when yeah. you just look on the for you page, which is the main thing, that stuff gets kind of, it, it, it gets sifted in with between all this other ex external this, uh, creators. This, this goes back to my infatuation with the uh, uh, slash r slash all page on Reddit, where it's like, I, I once I can smell that this feed is a bit too curated for my tastes, I'm like, no, 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 but what's everybody watching? Or at least lie to me and tell me this is what everybody's watching. Yeah. Um, so that's the other tough thing about TikTok. I would think uh, if TikTok was perfect, Byte would not have any chance in January 2020. But you look at uh, some of the issues that people have with TikTok, which is uh, the way that it is moderated, which is kind of oblique. And uh, because it is owned by a Chinese company, often uh, feels um, oppressive in, in many ways, to, to say the least. Um, Overly curated, like a, a, a totalitarian uh, in that regard? Yeah, that would be a good word for it. Um, and so I can see... People who would never have been on TikTok using Byte because it has that independence from uh, the Chinese, the Chinese government or Chinese corporations, whichever slice of it's it's you it's call a it. bit of Android versus Apple, where it's like Apple's gonna guide you through everything, where Android is like, no, 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 you can do whatever you want. I, I the the biggest thing that I would wonder about is that at this point, TikTok to me is very far down their own road, like like the the its relationship to Vine is more that, oh my God, what if Vine had just added some of these things? They could have had this, right? Yeah. But TikTok is now so, they, they've done such a tremendous job of creating their own communities. Like there are videos on there, there are memes and relationships that users have with each other that simply just don't exist anywhere else. Like there's this, this the thing, uh, not just music will, will people use, there's these random audio clips, right? Of people like laughing. Or my favorite one is like, there's just this kind of stoner dude who's like, like, oh, like, what a relaxing day. What a <laughs> relaxing day. And then all of a sudden, there's like, he's like, like, what? No, dude, what are you doing? And and so it's like his friends are showing up and now they want him to party is like the insinuation of the video. But now that is uh-oh. Oh, no. I needed to be alone. Oh, yeah. Now we're, oh, getting... we're back. Oh, wait. We're... Oh. Uh, hold it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Uh, uh, you... Oh, wait. Still waiting. Yeah, let's hang up and give it back. Hold on. Oh. Our connection is too weak. Oh, no. What's going on? Our connection. The computers are not. Uh, the computers are not. Your connection is too weak. Our connection. More like your connection. Oh, crappity crap. What's going on? It's your face's connection. This one computer out of all three is not on. Hmm. That's fun. All right, everybody. Hmm. We're gonna take a yeah, back. man. I'm getting I'm getting a hundred megabitos. Okay, <laughs> I got all your megabits. What a mega bitch. Let's see. All right. Hey, there we go. I just had to jiggle it. <laughs> just uh, a little bit. Uh, so, so the last thing we got clear was you were saying the friends all come in and it's and implying you just had a party and and now it's become its own thing or something. 
Well, no, yeah, because so now you can apply that. What's a moment where your friends, where you're enjoying separation, and now your friends want you to be a part of, you know, something wants you to be a part of it again, right? And so the one that I thought was funniest was, you know, this like you know, kind of stoner chick, where she's just, you know, uh, by herself and just uh, uh, using uh, uh, the lip syncing to the the track of like, what a relaxing day, and then oh. all of a sudden <laughs> it's her, it's her bong. That's like, like, you know, there to show up. And she's like, like, no, dude. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but these are, this is the art form. And I, I wonder where bite's going to go. Yeah. Like, because there are two things that would seemingly limit it. And that is, A, they're sticking to six seconds. So they believe that six seconds is important to the art that you create on this platform. And that would seem to be opposite of where TikTok had evolved the medium. And two, that you are following people. And so now you are back into what we have on Facebook, what we have on on Twitter, what we have on Instagram, where this is about followers. This is about uh, uh, how many people are are interacting with you. And I think that that that's interesting. I'm curious. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll see how it how it uh, how it how it goes over the next. I mean few days 20 even. minutes maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> who knows uh so yeah there we go just a little a little bit of social media talk uh any other topics other or should we go to picks uh no i, I, I yeah i'm all good um sure. I, I i guess as far as picks um uh, I, I, I don't think we talked about it, but I saw the movie 1917 uh i liked it it was good um yeah. i liked that it was all uh you know real time just two people following them it felt like you were really there the entire way through a uh, very simple story very believable setting and uh I, I liked it quite a bit nice uh yeah that that uh supposed to be it is good i hear it's very good uh, i mean it's not super groundbreaking or anything but i i, I liked it a lot sweet uh, do you have do you have a personal pick of all the Oscar movies, of which one you, uh, you 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 like the best? Fun fact: I don't even know what's nominated for an Oscar. You want to you want to give me a rundown? Best best picture. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's see. Best picture twenty twenty. Uh, we are looking at. Uh, Ford versus Ferrari. For the, best picture. Uh huh. The Irishman. Jojo Rabbit. Oh, dude, give it. Uh, you can give that one. I, I, it's already got it. I don't even know what comes next, but I'll give it my best picture. Uh, Joker. Oh, wait. I take it back. Joker's the best picture. <laughs> Little Women. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, deserving of being in the mix. Maybe maybe not the winner. Uh, marriage Story. Mm, uh, I hear that there's uh, that that's good. 1917. Ooh, I didn't even know it was nominated. That's great. All right. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh man, did I hate the first eighty percent of that movie? <laughs> and Parasite. Uh, ooh, Parasite has a good chance. Um, that would be that would be an extraordinary thing for a, 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 a so-called foreign language film to be best picture. You got to pick a favorite, Bry. <sighs> I want to give it to Jojo Rabbit. I like that a lot. Okay, but I honestly, I really think... wanted to see Jojo Rabbit. I I I'm upset that I couldn't find the time to see it. Oh, it's just great. Um. Just I, you, I think Joker might be the best crafted of those movies that I heard you say. Oh wow, uh, Justin, do you have a do you have a fave? Uh, no, I haven't seen all of them yet. Um, of 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 the ones that I've seen, uh, Irishman's fantastic, but I haven't seen 1917. Actually, no, no, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is my favorite. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll bet. Hollywood might might be the might be the pick. Um, but also, so also would, Tarantino's a fairly familiar face at the Oscars by now, so I wonder if that works against him. Well, but he's never won Best Picture. Ooh. Like, the, yeah, but he's not. He's not. But too, it's not his final movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not. It's not last his final minute. movie. But he keeps saying that like he's got maybe one more, and we don't know whether or not that one's going to be about Hollywood or Star Trek. <laughs> old Hollywood. Well, I think he right. said the Star Trek one wouldn't count. Oh, that's interesting. In well, country. I mean, he's not also going to stick to whatever he's saying. Like, that's that's ridiculous. But uh, I haven't seen Marriage Story, and I will probably not see the movie about 30-somethings getting divorced uh, with my wife. So at some point, maybe when I'm on the road, I'll quietly watch Marriage Story <laughs> by myself. Um, 
and I haven't seen Jojo Rabbit yet. I, I, hopefully, while I'm on the road, I'll catch up with some of these uh, some of these films on oh. on plane and stuff like that. I'm so excited for both of you guys to see Jojo Rabbit. Uh, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. The only two on this list that I've seen is Once Upon a Time and Parasite, uh, and that feels like a pretty easy pick for me uh, towards Parasite. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, Once Upon a Time. I that's a movie that I didn't like walking out of the theater, and the more I thought about it, I thought a lot of it was good. Um, but I, I, I didn't love the ending. I actually, I didn't love the ending. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that's, that's all I loved. It's, it's, it's like a, <laughs> it reminds me of the, uh, uh, do you, are you familiar with the pink golf ball joke? Uh, no. it's, it's, it's a, it's a classic joke that you tell a friend and, um, oh, and it begins with a child and, and long story. I, I won't, I won't actually do it, but the whole joke is that you, uh, uh, the kid keeps asking for his parents to give him pink golf balls all the way up until he's like 80 years old. And you go through like as many years of this kid asking for a birthday and not getting pink golf balls and as many excuses for him not to get it as he get to go. And then finally, he's an old man and his grandchildren are like, oh, yeah, you, you keep asking for the pink golf balls. What? Why is it? What is it about the pink golf balls? And he goes, well, I'll tell you, it's. And then he died. <laughs> and then so yeah. the whole joke is you keep him on the hook as long as you can just to get to the end. Uh, what spot of time of Hollywood felt a bit like a big <laughs> golf ball joke to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I've, I've, got, I've got a little bit more appreciation for the setup, uh, but I can, certainly, I can certainly appreciate that read. Uh, you got to pick Justin? Once upon a time in Hollywood. <laughs> okay, there we go. The pink golf ball joke. <laughs> the pink golf ball joke is my pick. Yeah. Uh, I have a, I have a pick. So over the weekend, I did a stream here, like I norm like I do a lot of times here on twitchtv attack On Friday night, we had a friend in town, and so we had a little shindig at my place, doing some Jackbox, uh, you know, party games on the stream, and it was set up in my living room, which is a little, uh, it's uh, f a little further from my desk than I can easily get to, but we're doing streaming and you got to hit buttons and stuff. And I actually had a good experience using the Stream Deck mobile app. Um, so this is, if you, oh. uh, so Elgato makes these Stream Decks, which are these little, uh, uh, these little like keypads that you can keep on your desk and they hit buttons and they affect different things in your, uh, yeah, just yeah. they affect different parts of your stream setup. They can go to scenes and affect sources. Um, but using, they have an app version of it where it's about the size of that medium one that Justin has, and you can set all the buttons and do it mobile, uh, which helped out a lot for doing, doing that stream. Uh, I don't know about the price. I don't feel like I love it's, Three or four dollars a month, or thirty. Oh, geez. Or uh, what's funny is, is you said three or four. I'm like, that's not bad for an app. And then you said a month, and suddenly I heard forty to sixty dollars per year. Right. Um. And and you, it's like thirty five or thirty six to do yearly, which I I don't I don't love that, especially given the fact that the stream decks, like the size of the one that Justin has, is the prices on those have come down a little bit to the hundred two hundred dollar range. Um. Having having a remote control for it was nice, um, but the the price is a little steep. Where I would only want to do it, I would only want to subscribe to it when I knew I needed that mobility. Uh, but I think it worked really well. So um, that's that's my experience. The Elgato Stream Deck Mobile. Cool. All right. Well, uh, for Justin Robert Young and Brian Rushwood, I'm Bryce Castillo. This has been After Things. It's been after. Do do. Hey! Hey, look at that! Hey! Good job, hey, 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 uh, hey, permanent hey. host of the show, Bryce Castillo. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, everybody. We'll be back in a few hours with Cord Killers. We got uh, Meryl Barr, fan favorite. I, uh, I texted, uh, <laughs> I, I don't mind saying this again to Meryl Barr, so I'll say it on the stream. But I, t I, I, I texted Tom. Uh, that feeling when you roll into the office, open up the cord killer's doc, see that the guest is Meryl Barr, and instantly think, oh, good, I don't have to worry about filling the air with my hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that'll be coming up. Justin, you got any more streams today? Not today. Uh, tomorrow I'm streaming stuff, and then we're doing Night Attack uh, tomorrow. That's right. Uh, and then, uh, then I'm on the road. It, it basically uh, Wednesday begins the uh, did I tell you guys what I'm doing Wednesday uh, no 
What is that? So I'm going out early. I'm not going to Iowa. I'm going to Idaho uh, <laughs> because uh, the Go Game hit me up, and they were like, hey, look, uh, can you do this? Uh, a company, a large company, is in Boise renting out an arena so they can have a dodgeball as in dodgeball the movie style tournament and they need an announcer holy so cow going to be announcing a dodgeball like the movie tournament that's uh, awesome and then i'm like i was like the, the it wasn't a ton of money and I was like, eh, I don't know. And then I'm like, oh, crap. I forgot to buy my tickets to Des Moines. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. But you're flying me to Des Moines. So I only have to buy a one way from Des Moines back. Ah, uh, that's great. That's amazing. Wow. Uh, please tell me that you'll be able to stream some portion of that. Because that's going to be uh, legendary. Highly, highly unlikely. But oh. if there's any publicly uh, published video, then, uh, then I will certainly direct people to it. Very cool. Well. Uh, everybody, that's going to do it for us here. We'll be back in a few hours with Cord Killers. Uh, Justin will be back tomorrow with uh, 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 Pol uh, politics stuff. Until then, bye! Bye! bye. bye.